uh, school sports and PE conference that the East Radio of Yorkshire held at the SPA, uh, which 200 teachers attended, is to reaffirm our core belief in the value of sport and the networks that we've created over the last few years, which are now delivering great sport, PE, physical education opportunities to a whole host and range of children. More children taking part in more events and more sports and getting more out of life because of it. And today is really allowing both the development of skills and insight into new things. Uh, people are in the workshops now, uh, boxer sizing, skipping, using all sorts of innovative techniques that they can take back and engage children who traditionally may not be as engaged by traditional sports. But also the opportunity to work as a network of partnerships through the sports, through sports colleges, the, uh, the, the PDMs and the school sports partnerships to really get a sense of we're in it together. Uh, this may be difficult times, but the value of what we've achieved can't be cast aside, and we have to make sure that we're really going to drive forward and make something even better out of the future than we have. Today. to work with schools in the context of sport to build a brighter future for young people through PE and sport. And I wish uh, colleagues in the East Riding the very best of luck as they start to build their legacy going forward. <laughs> to give a kind of take from an elite level sportsman uh, and to how sport can, I guess, transform people's lives. Uh, I was very fortunate to have competed in two Olympic Games and sport gave me a hell of a lot. Uh, so being involved in today's event uh, where we are reinforcing the importance of sport and sport and networks is hugely important to me. Sport really shapes everything that I do. It shapes everything that my kids do. And I recognise that it's a huge catalyst for personal, uh, for personal change. And at the moment when uh, young people are struggling to look for positive role models, sport can absolutely provide that uh, and change people's lives. So it's especially good to be working within this partnership because it's a really forward-thinking partnership. Uh, they really uh, work together well as a network uh, and it's full of very passionate people who have a clear vision of exactly what it needs to look like within, within the network. Uh, so it's good to be involved and I hope uh, everybody well, What metaphor can I use? to get everybody into the zone for performance. So I thought, right, if I'm in the Olympic Games, I'm getting ready to compete in front of 125,000 people. Uh, as you know, you don't just turn up and expect to produce world-class performance. You know, a lot of hard work and preparation goes into it. So <laughs> you know what's coming. <laughs> uh, so uh, I thought, well, let's take a metaphor of direct for the Games. And uh, in the Games, I get physically and mentally warmed up. So let's do a physical warm-up for my session. No? <laughs> so come on, on your feet. On your feet. Yeah. 
Right. Okay, if anyone's got any kind of physical ailments or anything like that, please be sensible because I've got no public liability insurance. Uh, so, uh, feet shoulder width apart, arms down by your, uh, by, by your waist. Uh, now, okay, everyone knows what squat thrusts look like, yeah? <laughs> okay, what I want you to do is put your left ear on your left shoulder. Are you gonna... That's why you need to do a warm up. The amount of people who got that wrong then. Uh, I don't need to warm up, you do. Uh, right, one, two, three, four, five, six. And right here on right shoulder. One, two, three, four. Some terrible, you know, a lot of people like that, you know. Bad mobility, that. Chin on your chest. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's get our shoulders going. So you're going to do a big shoulder roll back. One, two, three, four, five, six. And forward. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, okay, a little bit of coordination, that should be nice and easy for you in the rows that you've got. So left arm forward, right arm back. You're going, I'm doing it. <laughs> and you're doing back stuff, by the way. Okay, so if you learn anything today, let's just make sure we do this one, okay, so. Forget about it, it's not really not important. Okay. If you get anywhere near that record, the whole of the Smith family sit around the telly and go, hey. <laughs> but the question is, you know, what is it about enabled a six foot one scouser like me to put his foot down and clear a bar set all the way up there at two meters thirty-seven? Uh, you know, it was quite funny because about three months ago I was doing, a, I was doing an event at a, at, a, uh, at a school assembly and I was at this quite posh school in, uh, in Guildford and uh, I took the bars along and I said, so what enabled me to jump that high, you know, and I was expecting, you know, like those great younger masters over there, expecting to go with stuff like, you know, self-belief, confidence, responding to failure, and the right mental approach and all that type of stuff, all that good stuff. But the first kid shouted out steroids. <laughs> uh, but you know what? The amazing thing is, actually, to stay here. You know, when it comes to change, because we're all facing a lot of change at the moment, aren't we? I mean, I'm quite fortunate that I do quite a lot of work in the network, uh, and I can empathise a lot of the challenges that people face. Uh, but you know what? When I look at a barrier like that now, it looks nigh on impossible. Because I'm looking, I'm looking at it through the same eyes as you. We're retired kind of 11 years ago now, when you, when you look at something like that, it does look impossible. And any change program that I've ever been involved with, any major project that I've ever been involved with, when you set out at the start, you know what, it does look nigh impossible. But when you break it down, apply logical steps, have the right mental approach, then you know what, all of a sudden belief grows and it starts to become possible. So what I want to do today is I want to share, you in, share with you my world of performance. Uh, how I got to the stage of the Olympic Games where I was able to produce some of the best performances in my life. And I hope that from, that, from my experience in those games and from the experience of the elite level sport, that there'll be one or two things that you can take away to help you make an impact in your role. Uh, but before I do that, I want to show you a little bit of video footage. <laughs>
I will show you exactly what happened in the heat of the Mexico Olympic Stadium in front of 80,000 fans. The 1968 Olympic Games proved to be a turning point in the history of the high jump event. Into the Mexico City Olympic Arena came not only a new name to the sport, but a new approach, which was to revolutionize the high jump event. Dick Fosbury from the United States demonstrated a new style of high jump, which some considered strange and awkward. It was a jump he had devised in the previous years, and one which unsettled his opponents. While the crowd at first saw him as a novelty, his continued success at clearing the ever-increasing height soon made it apparent he was a serious contender. Valentin Gabrilov from the Soviet Union failed at his attempt of 2.22 meters, while Fosbury and his US teammate Edward Carruthers cleared their way to a jump off. The bar set at 2.24, Carruthers failed, and Fosbury took his new style of high jump over the bar and into the history books. Fosbury had won his goal. Within a few years, the Fosbury flop had become the standard method of jumping in this great Olympic sport.